Hey everybody, this is Michael Gabriel and you're watching CMS TV. Just a taste of the rods right there on Chris Aiken Presents. And joining us right now from the rods to talk all about this brand new release live at Rose Hall, it is the drummer extraordinaire, Mr. Carl Kennedy, and Freddie Villano of the rods. How you guys doing? Doing great, Chris. How are you? Good. Good to talk <clears throat> to you both. Uh, uh, Carl, good I thought, to see you once again. <laughs> I thought this was going to be like you were bringing steak and chicken over. I thought this was a live <laughs> interview. What the hell? I get, took Next a shower. Time. Next I time. made a teriyaki <laughs> London broil. <laughs> Ooh, nice. <laughs> well, guys, you obviously have a, a, a very cool project that's out there now. Um, live at Rose Hall. It was released, what, a week and a half ago or so, two weeks right. ago? Yeah, very um, recent. So let, let's let's dig into this, man. I mean, the band's obviously been around for um, a year or two or 35 or something mm -hmm. along those lines. So, you know, but, but yet you guys are still out there. You're still very active. And more than anything, at least this is a fanboy question, looking at it, you're still proud of the music that you're playing live, where a lot of bands that have played 35 years or what have you... They ain't doing live records anymore because they just know what what it'll sound like. So let's <laughs> let let's start there, man. What what was it about, you know, a doing a live record and b this particular performance that made you want to put it out there? Well, for me, it was a historic event because Mr. Villano joined the band, and uh, our tour manager Patricia, she said, somebody asked her, "What's it like, like with?" Freddie in the band now. What what's it like with the band and the guys and whatever? And she said, she said, and of course I hate her forever for saying this, but it was <laughs> dead dead accurate. She said, you know when you have two old cats in the house, right. and then you and then you bring a kitten and introduce a kitten into the household, the old cats just like perk up and exercise and run around and it's yeah, like sure. energizes the old cats. So. I think that's what she was implying that Freddie joining the band, you know, and energized us. And I think that's exactly what happened. Freddie and I, we've done projects. We've played on albums. We've played live as guest performers, and we've locked in from day one. So having Freddie in the band, it was a no-brainer for us. But live, it was it was great. And and the uh, the the reason for the Rose Hall was because it was Freddie's first gig. Okay. And so I wanted it recorded, and we did shot video, and uh, such that it is. And we, but we, I wanted it recorded, and it, it turned out really well. And uh, warts and all, and the, the warts are mine. So go figure. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, no pressure, right, Freddie? First yeah, gig with the I band here. It's a live that. record. <laughs> no pressure. A friend of ours put it put it into perspective recently, though. He was like, "Man, your first gig with the Rods is a record now. It doesn't get any cooler than that." You know, so. <laughs> That um, wow, yeah, y yeah. You know, it's not lost on me. You know that that privilege, um, and I think you know Carl and everybody, um, you know, are experiencing my enthusiasm for being a part of this project. You know, I'm just having a really good time. I love the music. You know, it's totally sure. in my wheelhouse and the type of stuff that I I grew up listening to. Um, and so 
you know, I mean, I just think that, you know, those kinds of intangibles that you bring to the table in a situation like this, um, personality, you know, attitude, um, you know, aside from the playing, you know, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of great players out there, but ultimately at the end of the day, you're going to spend a lot of time together. So you have to, you have to get along and, and inspire each other in positive ways because it's, it's in this business and we've all been in it for, you know, a long time. It's very easy to, um, affect each other negatively because you spend so much time together. So you have to just really, you know, find the positive <clears throat> ways to influence each other musically, personally. Sure. And, and so I think we're, you know, we're kind of riding that wave right now. And it's, it's been a lot of fun for everybody seemingly. Yeah, and it's I'll been, speak it, for myself. All across know. the board, it's been a great vibe. Freddie and I work so well together on this new studio album we're doing. Okay. It, it's great. But live, you know, we, we work things out and we change things all the time. And, uh, you know, there's only the only negative, And, you know, I don't want to be Debbie Downer about Freddie coming into the band. But there has been, like, the Rods have always had Rods Law, certain things that we just put in place and that you must obey them as a Rod member. <laughs> right. And, and uh, one of the things is... The new member bakes a cake for the rest of us. <laughs> nice. And, you know, have I seen a cake? I haven't seen I, any I freaking haven't cake. Done, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> telling a very precarious line right now, I guess. I'll have to, uh, maybe in Chicago it'll happen. <laughs> All right, good. We could actually have deep dish pizza put a candle in it. And call there you it go. Good. Well, you better make sure that that happens, Freddie, or you might not you might not be in the band anymore. <laughs> you might I better be some, look out for other bass players baking with baking that's skills. That's right. right? <laughs> some some hack hack bass players been playing for two years will show up with a cake and we'll go. Well, you're in. So, Carl, nice. tell us what challenges do you have as a drummer in 2023? Um, I think. Well, for one thing, I try to learn everything I can learn. So I practice and I try to learn. And the fine line for me is implementing the implementing new, especially linear rudiments. I love linear rudiments. I play them, but a lot of the music we play, like incorporating linear rudiments sometimes is kind of like the square peg in the round hole. So it's kind of finding the balance and of course, I play the double pedal. Um, I practice that at home and I can play the, you know, it's a, each foot, um, each step on your pedal gives you two beats, which gives you that incredibly fast double bass playing sure. at home. I can do that, but live, it's a whole different thing. I'm thinking of looking into triggers now, but they're great. I, I just, you know, we had a drummer use them for the first time with us and I was surprised how great it was. Cool. So I think there's a yeah. Yamaha or a Roland. My friend just told me about that he's been mm -hmm. using. So I'm going to try that and see, but to, you know, so I can't really use that live very much. I do a little bit in my solo, but I, I think it's finding that fine line between trying to play my style and incorporating some new styles, which are very linear and lots of single fast single strokes mm -hmm. um, without losing my style. Because I find that a lot of drummers, it's an ama amazing um, BPMs and so on, but there's a little bit of the soul lost. And so I'm all about sure. the feel. And uh, so that's for me, that's been the challenge, finding that fine line between, you know, it, trying to compete with what's out there today and play right. that way and incorporate that style and trying to stay current and modern, but without losing, you know, what I've worked years for. So. Sure. And with the rods, I mean, are you truest to the al to the earlier albums or have you guys enhanced any of the songs with some new little pizzazz stylings or <laughs> I think have you. I think this this new album I was just thinking about this because we are in the middle of probably two thirds of the way done the through the through the this new album. Okay. But but I was thinking about the music and I was thinking that we are we've gone back to basics. It's a raw album, which I love. But I'm thinking it's it kind of reminded me of, it's like a cross between Motorhead and ACDC, which was kind right. of what the rods were originally. It's heavy, yeah, but it's it's that's what I think of it as. And so, uh, you know, it's some ways it's a throwback. Some of it's it's really anthemic, and you know, I love it. I I think it's some of the best material we've had. And sure, Freddie's great. Playing, I put it on this morning. With Freddie's bass playing without you know trying to suck up here and get the cake. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
you know, it's a, he brings a lot of musicality and power to the band. And so I'm loving that. Sure. Does that make you change? Is that part of the change that you're making, Carl? Is that what Freddie's doing is so, I don't, I don't want to say new, but so fresh to you that it's, that it's pushing you in directions that you haven't tackled maybe ever, at least in a while. It, it's allowing me to explore what I've always wanted to, and, and I've had pushback. I'm always, as a producer, I've always been about arranging from day one. That's been my forte. Right. And I always haven't been able to do that because, you know, with our previous bass player, Craig Gruber was great, but, you know, with Gary in the band, Gary was reluctant to do those things. And Freddie and I, we just work together and we explore and we come up with things. So I, I don't know that he's pushing me, I'm pushing him, but I think it's collaboratively. We are coming up with some really cool bottom end ideas that, that I love. Sure. For for you, Freddie, you know, stepping into a band that's iconic like this, that has, mm -hmm. you know, such a history, even though you've worked with Carl before, I still have to imagine that there's a factor in your head, at least at the beginning, where you're like, well, that's, this might be an idea, but I'm going to kind of wait and see what the band does, you know, instead of jumping right in. Was it like that for you, or do you just jump right in and say, eh, this is what I feel, this is how I feel it should play? Um, it, well, it's interesting. I will say that I've had, you know, I have previous experience playing with bands that have a history. Like, I played with Dee Snyder right. in a band called Widowmaker, and I played right, right. in Quiet Riot for a couple of years. So, oh, yeah. You know, and they, they're all different. Um, you know, Carl and Dave have been very open about allowing me to express myself. I will say that I was probably a little bit, um, you know, hesitant at first. And I even actually think I mentioned to Carl at one point, I said, well, you know, I kind of am just being the new guy. You know, I don't want to uh, assert myself. And he was like, no, you're one of the guys, you're, you're one of the, you know, three members in this band. We want you to assert yourself. So um, now they can't get rid of me and uh, they can't <laughs> shut me up. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's definitely, uh, you know, collaborative. You know, we uh, throw ideas around back and forth, you know, because we're all we all have home studios. So, you know, we track stuff and we send it around and, you know, give each other feedback and we try different things. And, um, you know, I, I also have a theatrical background and I went I got an MFA. And my MFA is a very obscure degree. It's it's an MFA in ensemble based physical theater. But what I tell people is that the short uh, hand uh, explanation of that is that I learned to play well with others. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so I, you know, I don't, I don't really get stuck on an idea if I have it, if, if, you know, if I throw something out and it gets, um, you know, people like it, want to try something with it. Great. If not, I move on. You know, I don't have that kind of attachment to that type of, um, collaboration you know it's for me it's just a give and take and some stuff will work some won't you know and that you can always meet on the actual application of the idea you know if you try something and it doesn't work well you tried it you know right Ra rather than just the thought in your head you know so it's been very um you know it's been great for me in that way just to, um, you know i'm really happy from a creative standpoint as well and and to that point for me I'm sure, Freddie, you've seen that David and I work very quickly together. We Our ideas yep. flow. And Freddie fits right into that. Like, it's just seamless. So it's it's great because David and I have been working for 40 years. It's sometimes it's just mm, try this or whatever. It's very quick. And we seem to be on the same wavelength for the most part um, and willing to try things. And Freddie is exactly that guy. It fits right in perfectly. So when we're doing things, it's just a fun thing because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a uh, – it's a fun, energetic exchange of ideas. So it's, synergistic, it, if you will. When we're in when we're in a room together rehearsing, it's fun. It's fun to see how quickly and intuitively Carl and Dave pick up on each other. You know, and so um, you know, I I can't say that I'm quite at that level yet because you know they've been together much longer than me. Sure. But it is um, you know it's inspiring to see that because there's just. Uh, a con it, there, it's an unspoken connection. You know, it's just a, it's just comes from years of playing together. Right and on. making but, it sound like it's, you know, a classical composition. There's a Rod's law that uh, I spoke about Rod's law, but there is a Rod's <laughs> law 
that says that any song that's longer than five minutes or takes is more than three chords or sorry, more, <laughs> takes, takes longer than takes longer than five minutes to learn or is more than three chords is not a good rod song. So, so to that effect, you know, how tough right. can this be? You know, but, but in that context, it's, it's going great. And I have to say, David, you know, I, on this album, I contributed song ideas, lyric ideas to David, but okay. David wrote all the music and uh, there's a song that David and Freddie wrote together, which I don't think is on this yeah. album might be on the next one, but, um, it's been amazing to see what David has come up with. I mean, he's just some of the best song songwriting uh, that the Rods have had in years and years. I'm, I'm thrilled about it, really. I'm, I'm very uh, optimistic about this sure. album. Carl, Carl, let me ask you this, and I've awesome. always thought this about David. Um, I've always thought that he never kind of got the credit he deserved because the first thing that comes out of everybody's mouth is Ronnie James Dio. And the yeah. relationship, and, 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 and believe me, I do not say that with any kind of negativity, because obviously Dio is like a true god of, a of, god, yeah. of, mo of metal. But at the same time, for David, I've always thought that because, his, because the two names were every interview, every everything, David Weinstein and Dio, boom. You know, it, yeah. it always I, comes together. It's a really great point. Um, and it is, uh, I, I've recent years, probably the last five, seven years, I thought to myself, it's a, it's really kind of, um, it, it kind of diminishes what David has done and how great he is as a talent Yeah. that every, every time it's led with, this is Ronnie James Dio's, Ronnie James Dio's cousin. It, he doesn't need it. He has his own history and own pedigree. And of course he played an elf with, with Ronnie. Sure. And they were they were working together on material prior to his death, and you know he had been asked to join Rainbow a number of years prior, so he has a history with Ronnie, but that's not his all, all of his history. And so I agree with you. I think he's a great guitarist and a great writer, and he's a, a monster performer. He's a great. He's like, I get this ringside seat watching him. And now Freddie and Rock have this chemistry on stage, so it's kind of like the circus is back in town for me. <laughs> Um, well, as as we move forward here with with live at Rose Hall, I, as somebody that has seen the band before, I know that this is exactly what you guys do. You know, I mean, from listening to it, and and I listen to it the way you're supposed to listen to it. I put on the headphones, I turned it up as loud as my as my phone <laughs> would go, and I listen to it, and it's 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 a true concert. It's definitely not overdubbed. It's definitely raw and. It it captures what I think is missing today, which is just straight up rock and roll, warts and all. But the energy is what the the energy is more important than the maybe the note perfect sound. And I agree. And, and I and I'll point to like Violation as an example. If you listen to Violation on Rose Hall versus Violation from 1980, whatever when when Wild Dogs came out. It's like it, it's night and day different, you know the feel and the vibe, but the the new version is just so much more, rrr, you know, in your in your face and hard. For you, is that is that what still drives you to keep going and to keep doing the rods and to do Kennedy outside of the rods, but to keep doing music? Is that live mm -hmm. rush that you get to do it? Yeah, I have, I, I absolutely, it's that. And it's the passion to play, play live. And also, uh, when we reformed, what, 17 years ago? I can't remember mm -hmm. when we went to Norway, whatever it was, it was a long time ago. The criteria for me was, the, the biggest one was, I don't want to be a facsimile of what we once were. Right. If that's where we are, I'm out. So I don't want to be that. Um, I don't mind being a diminished player because of age and time goes by and you play uh, differently and you have to adjust your playing. But I see these artists who go out and I'm, I'm looking at them and I think this is kind of, I mean, God bless them, but it's also at the same time for me, I'm thinking it's kind of sad. Like maybe you should have walked away when, you know, you were on fire rather than, you know, wait until you're just a burning ember, if you will. Mm -hmm. But I get it because if you're out making money, it's a tough, tough business. So I respect it. But I'm just saying for me, I, I would not want that. But I still have the passion. I have another project which won't be called Kennedy, but I'm 
you know, doing that. Freddie has outside projects he works on. Um, for me, it is about playing live. And right now, I haven't had this much fun playing live with the band since the early days of The Rod. So for me, I, I'm just, just having a great time. Tell us about your last Rod show and your and the next Rod show, <laughs> where that's going to be. Well, the last Rod show was the chance. Oh no, I'm sorry. It was at the L in Elmira, and we're going oh, to okay. shoot it. We're going to shoot one of our videos for the the uh, new album there. I Great am familiar thing. with the chance. How did it have been there in Poughkeepsie? I don't. I don't know if you guys know, but yeah. Eric plays guitar for Stephen Piercy. So, <laughs> so oh, okay, nice. cool. So yeah. he's he's in the same mix as you guys, yeah. right? <laughs> nice. Yeah. So the L was the L was a fun gig. I mean, the chance was a great gig. The chance was yeah, you know, light, lightly but enthusiastically in right. attended. And uh, but you know, for me, I've always been this. For me, I play a hundred percent. I don't care if it's been there are two people or twenty thousand. It's the same for me. There's only I have one way to play, and I never dumb it down because. I always found that if I dumbed it down or some guess, oh, there's nobody out there, man, I just, you know, I'm not into it. I'm like, if I do that, then I'm sort of cheating myself and, and uh, diminishing my talent and, and yeah. cheating the people who actually came. Some people come and maybe it's a small audience, but they did come. And so they're expecting you to give 100%. So Plus I'm you could get, you get some great photos. You get some great photos no matter how many photos. people are there. That's right. And a photo is worth a thousand people, they say. That's right. My friend Arnie Goodman told me one time, why don't you come into New York? You live in Cortland, but why don't you come into New York? I'm like, you know, it's kind of a, dra a drive for me. And, you know, he goes, you only have to come in twice a year. Everybody will think you live here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's funny. Freddie, let me ask you this, and this is outside yeah. of the rods for a minute, but, um, you know, you mentioned it, and I was going to bring it up anyway, um, mm -hmm. playing with Widowmaker, which yeah. to me – I thought was the best project past or even current that D Snyder's ever done. Yeah. Those two records are fantastic. And I'm, I swear I saw you perform here in Cleveland on the standby for pain tour. Oh yeah. That was you me. Know, yeah. Was I, me. I, I yeah. Do, do you remember I was sitting? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 but, but that's when I joined, I joined when they, uh, for the standby for pain tour for sure. Right. So that Mark He's left? such a professional dude, D. Snyder. I got yeah. to play like two times, play guitar for him at like two separate gigs, and it was yeah. something else, man. I'm not a big guy. I'm like 5'10", and I would just like look up at him like, holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, present, I'm, short, you know? I'm shorter than that. They're probably one of the yeah. reasons why I got the gig was because... Um, you make him look taller? Well, Al Petrelli <laughs> was playing guitar, and we looked like bookends brothers see, right you know yeah we you know we were kind of both the same height same long brown hair <laughs> right both both italian you know so sure <laughs> nice well that'll well, do yeah. freddie freddie why do you think that and, and you may know this you may not but why do you think d didn't con continue with that band because it was so good i mean it well, was just yeah. so good well i know why because nobody was interested in it at that time <sighs> you know i mean it was uh the height of grunge Right. Um, you know, we were, we always played a few twisted songs in the set, mm -hmm. but we realized that, you know, most of the people that were coming really wanted to hear Twisted Sister. Um, so we even started kind of backloading the set with most of the twisted stuff so they would stick around through the new stuff. Right. Um, and then D just realized, you know, it was, let's see, this was probably around 95 or so. And the European festival season summer season was starting to germinate and um tribute bands were starting to sort of percolate to the top of the scene and i i think d realized that you know there was still a market for twisted songs and had he had his druthers at that time he probably would have reformed twisted sister but there were a lot of um you know there was a lot of internal you know strife Stuff. with <laughs> with that band um, so it took them a long time to finally get back together. But, you know, so he his aim was to go back out and do Twisted stuff. Right. Um, right. Which he did, you know, and little by little, you know, AJ rejoined the band and Eddie right. OJ to rejoin the band. Um, mm -hmm. And the only reason that I didn't, and I ended up doing shows with him with, you know, his SMFs solo project. or whatever? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Years, years later. But right at that time, he actually didn't, ask me to do it if, even though i was like the new guy and i was a little bit like well why didn't you ask me because he his intention was to continue with widowmaker you know okay. so he wanted to keep yeah. them separate 
Um, but you know, the the playing the twisted stuff just kind of took off for him, you know, and I guess it paid the bills better than Widowmaker. You know what? Um, I, now, so. right then, wasn't that right on the heels of of uh, Strange Land, the movie that he yeah. did, where he was that yeah, awesome? Yeah, that was right character. after that. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, like, I remember when he had the band Widowmaker, and I was like, great timing. And then having that movie, I thought it would have worked, like if he changed his look up more, like the movie, maybe even. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> well, he's always he's he's a really creative guy and he's always yeah. had his fingers in a lot of different things whether it's screenplay writing or you know obviously music but um, you know so he hasn't limited his creativity to just music so that's right you know another consider he was a DJ for a long time at a radio right. station up in Connecticut yeah. I think it was yeah. um, so you know he uh, you know I applaud that type of um, he refuses to be pigeonholed as just the guy from Twisted Sister right. and I respect that you know I think that you know I, I, I've i kind of without quite the amount of success that he's had but you know I went back to school and got a theater degree I freelance write for music magazines okay. um, you know so I I don't just define myself by being a bass player sure. any, anymore Whereas when I was 25 years old, you know, it was like that was all there was in my life. Right. Um, you know, and then you get older and a little wiser and you spread your wings a little bit. That's more. where I'm at. I'm like Eric Ferentino's guitarist, podcaster. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> totally, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, well, guys, um, you, you mentioned there's a, there's a new studio record that's in some form of development right now. Tell us what you tell us what you want us to know as we as we sit waiting for it. The, the title track is fantastic. Can't tell you what it is because the label will be announcing it shortly. Okay. Um, and uh, I, you know it's a it's a really raw, cool studio album. I'm really really happy about it. I can't wait to announce it, and I can't wait for people to hear it because uh, you know this is a little bit of a a return to what we're like live. You know, it's a lot of power and raw and energy. And the songs are really catchy and, and really strong. So that's all we can really say about it now until sure. the label kind of tied power. our hands on uh, on title. But, sure. but I'm, a- I'm, I'm happy about it. But then again... I'm happy about everything except not, <laughs> not getting not getting the cake. You know, that's right. a... Uh, but otherwise, I'm always happy. Can it be a pancake? <laughs> it could be a pancake. <laughs> you know, at this point, something, right? Just something. I made Just, pancakes today. That's what I was asking. <laughs> I made uh, blueberry what, banana what pancake. Oh, blueberry my, banana. Great my cake is in jeopardy now, Eric. Yeah, Eric yeah I don't know if you need a guitarist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's, no, it's only two. You got <laughs> one. It's two. It's bass. It's two less strings. Come on, you can do it. Come on, Eric. <laughs> I, I do have a few basses here. Nice. <laughs> well, uh, well, to get back to what your question earlier yeah. though about the live thing, you know, I would mm-hmm. say, you know, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day, you know, and if as great as Eddie Van Halen was, if you listen to Van Halen, you know, Van Halen to me, the the reason why Van Halen worked, a band like Van Halen, mm-hmm. is because. That it was like organized chaos, and yeah. it it uh, it sort of you know always existed on the brinks of brink of like falling apart, and that to me is like truly great rock and roll, like early Black Sabbath. You know, you listen to them, and it's sure. just like stuff that is just at the edge of you know. It always sounded re- really, real, really like coming apart. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. you know, right on, definitely. Well, well, guys, what um, w- I'll ask this, and you could just tell me you can't answer it, but what is the tentative timeline for the release of the new record mm-hmm. this year or 24 or what? No, we're hoping, you know, the end of this year, early first quarter of 24. So okay. we'll have this turned in by September, and then okay. it'll be up to them when they decide to release it. But hopefully soon. Excellent. Because we have another one we're starting, so we want to. <laughs> Keep moving yeah. them out, you know. You got to yeah. get another one in, dude. You're mm-hmm. you're supposed to be getting older and slowing down, not not doing <laughs> record after record at this point. <laughs> We're yeah, having well. too much fun. That's, That's right. <laughs> very good. Well, guys, obviously, men, the rods are back live at Rose Hall. Is the current release? It is. It is a true blue, straight up live rock record, which is rock metal, whatever you want to call it. It is a it's it's raw, which is which is the best thing about it in my mind. Um, where should we tell people to go 
to buy it and not just stream it, but actually buy it and, you know, buy merch mm-hmm. and all that other stuff. The rods.com and, uh, there'll be, there's, there is not a link up right now. I've been selling them through my PayPal. I put one thing up on Facebook and I've been inundated with oh. filling orders. My daughter helped me with, I, like, I never expected to have a second job filling <laughs> CD <laughs> orders. Like what the hell? But, um, there'll be a link. I mean, there's, you can always go to the rods.com and find everything okay. there and you'll find a link there shortly. So you can purchase this. All right. Great. Excellent. Well, one more time. It is The Rods, live at Rose Hall. It was released May 19th. Definitely go get it, therods.com. And, Freddie, Carl, thanks so much for joining us here on Chris Aker Presents. Yeah, hey, thank thanks you. Thanks for having us. It was great. All right, guys. Thank see you. you. Peace.